Recently, I checked out the beefy Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme Gaming, an impressive GeForce GTX 1080 graphics card boasting a massive cooler for some of the lowest temps we've seen yet. The Extreme also packed a fully redesigned PCB which included a 12-phase power design fed by a pair of 8-pin PCIe connectors. Overclocked, the GTX 1080 Extreme Gaming held a clock speed of 2.1GHz under load, which is about as good as the 1080 overclocking seems to get. Hot on the heels of the GTX 1080 Extreme Gaming, Gigabyte has released the GTX 1070 Extreme Gaming, which unsurprisingly is pretty much the same card with the GPU swapped out. Nvidia did this with their Founders Edition graphics card and it seems Gigabyte are following suit with their Extreme Gaming model. As such, I won't go into too much detail about the card's design as this was all covered in the previous video linked here. In short, the exact same cooler has been used and the PCB design is also the same with one key change. The power phase design has been downgraded from the 12 plus 2 design of the 1080 to a 10 plus 2 design for the 1070. The PCIe power configuration has also been changed from dual 8-pin connectors to a single 8-pin along with a single 6-pin connector. Once again, those of you wanting to overclock the GDX 1080 Extreme Gaming can turn to Gigabyte's own Extreme Engine software, which I found really useful when testing the G1 gaming model. The software enables easy overclocking and allows the user to increase the thermal target as well as the power target. The user can monitor the GPU's vitals and easy overclocking modes exist, along with the more complex manual overclocking options. Voltage states can be adjusted and custom fan curves can also be created. Finally, the all-important RGB lighting can be configured here and there's a few of the more standard effects to play with. When it came to overclocking, we were able to increase the memory speed by 612 MHz, resulting in a total frequency of 5400 MHz. The core was pushed to a base clock of 1844 MHz with a boost clock speed of 1983 MHz. Of course, due to Nvidia's GPU Boost 3.0, we know the card can run faster than the suggested boost clock if kept under the thermal and power targets. In the case of the Extreme Gaming, this allowed the card to hold an operating frequency of 2139 MHz after a 20 minute stress test, which was most impressive. So, now let's jump to the benchmarks and see how the Extreme Gaming got on then. First up is Battlefield 4, where at 1440p the 1070 Extreme Gaming managed 6 more FPS than the standard Founders Edition card. It wasn't as much overclocking headroom though, with both cards overclocked, the Founders Edition 1070 was only 2 FPS behind the Extreme Gaming's 99 FPS average. Up next was Far Cry Primal, where the Extreme Gaming managed 66 FPS. This was 5 more than the Founders Edition and just a single frame faster with both cards in their overclock configurations. In Star Wars Battlefront, the Extreme Gaming card was this time 7 FPS FPS faster than the Founders Edition card, and two frames higher with both cards overclocked. This also allowed the card to again leapfrog the 980 Ti reference card. The story was the same in The Division. The Extreme Gaming card was seven frames faster than its Nvidia reference card, and our overclock brought it to within four FPS of the GDX 1080 Founders Edition card. In Doom, the Extreme Gaming card was good for a silky smooth 106 FPS with its factory clock, and 112 with our custom overclock. This was, however, the only game where it wasn't able to defeat the overclocked 9 Ti, though it was still very close. In our last game tested, Armour 3, none of our cards tested were able to gain much through overclocking. The Extreme Gaming card managed 70 FPS initially and then 72 FPS once overclocked, which did still put it a little ahead of the Founders Edition. The higher performance of the Extreme Gaming card looks even better when compared to the Founders Edition card once you see how little extra power it's consuming to do so. The standard clocked card only used an average of 4 more watts, and once we overclocked both cards, the Extreme Gaming card used an extra 6 watts. Nothing too surprising here, and I'm again impressed by the 1070's performance per watt in general. Like Gigabyte's GDX 1080 Extreme Gaming card, the 1070 edition has extremely impressive thermal performance. As you can see on our graph, it runs super cool at 59 degrees standard and at 61 degrees with our overclock applied. This is significantly lower than the Founders Edition card, which was up around 77 degrees when it was working hard. Having recently looked at and being very impressed by the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme Gaming card, I went into this review with pretty high expectations, and overall, they were met. Thanks to the same beefy cooler found on Gigabyte's 1080 Extreme, this 1070 version had no trouble dissipating what the GP104 die threw at it, running at impressively low temperatures even when overclocked. Performance was great too. Out of the box, it was a healthy 9% faster than the stock clocked Founders Edition 1070, which is really nice. 
This meant it was within 3% of our Overclock 980 Ti reference card and within 14% of the 1080 Founders Edition. Once overclocked, we actually weren't able to extract much more out of this card than our Founders Edition counterpart, however it did edge it out by 2%. This meant it was now 2% faster than the Overclock 980 Ti and within 9% of the stock clock GTX 1080. On average, the Overclock config netted a bonus 5% performance over the factory clock and it did so at a much lower temperature than the Founders Edition cards. The cards don't seem to be available in stores just yet Yet, but hopefully they will be any day now, and hopefully they won't be at too much of a premium for those keen to get their hands on one of the best board partner GDX 1070s going around. Is this a 1070 card you'll be considering? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unboxed channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.